Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1501. In this video, we want to see how to enter a row number like row 14. So we enter this in on one sheet, and we need to retrieve from a different sheet the data in row 14 retrieved by our formula. Then we want to be able to change this to whichever row number and automatically retrieve that data. Now, if we go over to the sheet source data, here's our data. And Jim asked this question. I want to be able to manually enter a row number of a cell reference and have the formula return data from that row on another worksheet. For example, he gave this as the formula. That's the sheet name you can see down here, source data. That's the column, B column. And he wants to enter the row number. And he specifies, well, row number is a row number I manually enter. This should be no problem. If we go over to the sheet 1451, I've already entered the row number. Hey, if we only wanted row 14, this is how easy it would be, equal sign. And guess what? We need to get data from the other sheet. So instead of clicking on the cell reference like we would on this sheet, we actually have to click, and I'm going to click Escape equal sign and click on the sheet name first. Look up to the formula bar. Excel is, of course, polite. It automatically puts in the sheet name. That explanation point, that's the syntax that says that text is OK in a formula, and it represents a sheet name. Now, because we have a space there, it has little apostrophes. But now, watch what happens to the rest of our formula. I'm going to click on B14. And sure enough, it put B14 in. If I hit Enter, I got exactly what I wanted. Click back on the cell in F2. The syntax for a sheet reference is always the name of the sheet in single apostrophes. Unless there's no space, then the apostrophes aren't there explanation point, and then cell reference. Now I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to change this to 15, Enter. Uh-oh, it didn't do anything. I'm going to come back to the cell F2. What we need to do is highlight the 14, and now I'm going to join the sheet reference and column B. I'm going to join it to whatever number I put into cell B3. So I'm going to ampersand, which is Shift 7, that's the Join symbol, and click on 15. And that should do it. Now from now on, it'll go to the correct sheet, column, and whatever row number. Enter. Uh-oh, that's definitely not going to work. F2, because all of that now is no longer a proper sheet reference. Anytime we have text like this in a formula and it's not a proper sheet reference, and it's not a proper sheet reference because as soon as we use the ampersand, we convert the whole formula to a text formula. So we have to abide by the rules for text and text formulas by wrapping everything in double quotes, including the B there. Now it'll work. When I hit Enter, uh-oh, we still have one more problem to solve. Excel, of course, considers that text because it is a text formula. You can always tell because the alignment is to the left. Guess what? F2, there's a function specifically programmed to take text that represents a reference and convert it back to a reference. And it's called indirect. You can even read the screen tip. Returns the reference specified by a text string which is exactly what we have. I'm going to hit Tab. That's all it does. We just put the text there, close parentheses, and Enter. That is amazing. Now it's doing what we want. If I come here and change it to 14, boom, I got Tyrone. 19, and I should get Yolanda. So the trick is we need to construct some sort of text formula that represents a reference where our variable part is whatever the row number is, and then put it inside of indirect. Now, F2. In this video, we actually are manually typing it in, which is what Jim wanted. But guess what? In our next video, we're going to take this whole solution to a new level. I'm going to come back to source data. What if we wanted the formulas 
to automatically update as I increased more rows. Not only that, but what if I don't know what the limits are? You can see over here 10 to 20. In our next video, we'll see how to build those limits in automatically here and disallow any row number that's not a proper row number in our table and totally make our formula dynamic. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next video.